Okay, I don't have to go through a long background lesson on who Aaliyah is because that would be a waste of time. You see, we all know that her death may have been planned and someone was trying to annihilate her. We also know the two main suspects, Jay-Z and Damon Dash. The alleged fiance who claimed to be engaged to the R&B star Aaliyah, but that turned out not to be true. So why did he lie? Was there something he wanted to hide? Was Jay-Z responsible for getting rid of Aaliyah because of secrets she had about him? Or was this some sick and carefully hidden secret battle with Atlantic and Jive slash RCA records? I mean, think about it now. I had to do some heavy research about this too. So here are, again, some theories. And I should have been a real cop instead of just being an intern for my law enforcement and criminal justice degree. And then later deciding to take up psychology, computer science, and graphic design. But that's enough about me. Let's get down to business. Now before we go into that, listen to this. Okay, you all remember the video I did about Aaliyah, R. Kelly, and Jay-Z? The Truth Chapter Part 2? Well, in the video, I claimed that Jay-Z may have had an affair with Aaliyah. And that made Damon Dash jealous. So upon Aaliyah recording her video, Rock the Boat, which is about sex, like most of her songs... Anyway, it was foretold that Aaliyah wanted to split some of the crew, but Damon was demanding a lot of her attention and begged her to come see him. So, she and some of her dancers and crew hopped on a plane and jetted out. But due to the plane alleged weight and driver being drunk, it crashed and blew up. But that still remains a mystery. The driver being drunk may have been a cover-up. The weight of the plane may have also been a cover-up because it seems someone was putting out stories to cover up the last lie and or truth. Okay, now after speaking to some airline pilots and asking for their analysis, it seems that doesn't make sense. The maximum allowable weight gross weight is about 6,300 pounds. That's with passengers and luggage and 4,038 pounds with empty weight, which leaves in between about 2,262 pounds, and the passengers allowed are six to 10. Now, in Leah's case, it was only eight, and they flew like this all the time. They all brought a bag or two. Most of the baggage got left behind with the set crew. So the whole theory about um, them put camera equipment and things of that nature was on the plane, that's completely false because we would have lost video and footage and things of that nature and upon investigating the crash site they didn't see any of the kind okay so let's move on with that and so the problem with this time with further investigation it seems that the plane crashed about 200 feet away from the one way meaning the plane didn't reach enough height to have blown up the way it did it was also foretold from the autopsy report that Aaliyah suffered a blow to the head and it sent her to shock. So upon the plane crashing, she was already knocked out. So that brings me to a conclusion that someone aboard that plane, probably the pilot who may get hired by Damon Dash and or Jay-Z to kill Aaliyah. And then a fight may have broken out and that distracted the pilot and he went nose down to the ground and crashed. But I believe that wasn't the plan. Elliot was supposed to have boarded that plane alone because the plane's engine was already rigged and a bomb was already set to blow up, I believe. And the pilot may have supposed to have jumped out prior to the plane crashing. But with all the people wanting to abort the plane, the plan got derailed and he then tried to talk everybody out of boarding it by saying it was too many people and luggage, but they didn't listen. Or was it something far more sinister? Now, before I go into theory part two, here's a history lesson. You remember me mentioning the feud with Atlantic and RCA slash job records? Well, this feud is real. You see, Atlantic has been around for many years. They were founded in 1947, and they produced some of the greats, such as Aaliyah, of course, ACDC, Anita Baker, Brandy, the Braxtons. Dr. Dre, In Vogue, Changing Faces, Ray Charles, Aretha Franklin, Fat Joe, Genesis, Jennifer Love Hewitt, Mick Jagger, Jewel, Otis Redding, and the Barquets, and many more. 
You know, mentioning Otis Redding reminds me of how he died. He too died in a plane crash on his way to another gig. And there was only one survivor, Ben Cawley, who was friends with James Alexander, who decided to take another flight. Fallon Jones, who also died in a plane crash, who James Alexander named his son Fallon Alexander, aka Jazzy Faye, after, who worked slash produced with Atlantic Records. Rivalry with LA Face Records, RCA Records, Sony Records, and Arrested Records. These are all within the same company. And so on, starting back in the early 2000s. Producing well known living acts such as Fantasia, T.I., Nappy Roots, CeeLo Green, Too Short, and Sierra, who's supposed to have been a new reincarnated Aaliyah. I'll talk about that later. So, it seems that James Alexander was told to stay behind because of the passenger count. The rumor to kill Otis Redding was floating around at that time. He was even warned by James Brown to not get on that plane, but he didn't listen. But you remember Ben Cawley, the only survivor of the plane crash who was seated just behind Otis Redding, says that he fell asleep along with the rest of the members they suddenly got tired. He also says he's suddenly awakened by Fallon Jones saying, oh no, after looking out the plane window and seeing ice and water. Ben Cawley said that he had nightmares every night till his death in September 21st, 2005 about that crash. Now here's where I will test your knowledge from my video, Lisa Left Out Lopez, whereas I said that Clive Davis owns Arresta and is partners with LA Face Records and Jive Records, who still produces R. Kelly and Aaliyah until Aaliyah's unfortunate death, also until she signed with Atlantic, their rival. Okay? Now. Clive Davis used to work for CBS Records, but got fired and signed on to Columbia Pictures, who wasn't called Columbia Records yet, and to help with the soon and now called Columbia Record Label. Yeah, the record company that produces Beyonce. Well, he then founded Arrested Records within that company, but remaining with Columbia Records. Okay, now here's where the feud begins. Remember, when you think of CBS Records, you have to think of Arresta Records, Columbia Pictures, Columbia Records, Jive Records, RCA Records, Sony Records, EMI Records, Epic Records, and LA Face Records, and many more. Think of them as one. They all was ran and are partner with Clive Davis. Now, with all of this being said, let's get back to what I was saying. Okay, you remember Otis Betty. Do you also remember me saying that it was rumored that they wanted him dead? But I didn't tell you why. Well, you must understand that the group had one white member. And it was in the middle of civil rights. CBS Records at the time was in rival with Atlantic Records, whose partners with Stax Records, who both are known for taking each other talent, such as Aretha Franklin and so on. Now, you already know that Otis was signed with Atlantic slash Stax Records, and CBS Records wanted him. But he refused. He considered Atlantic Records slash Stax Records his home. But rumor has it, and have yet to be proven, because the wealthy controls the government and the music industry, hint the Illuminati. Also, know that the record companies are known for killing off their competitors' artists, but this is mainly with Arresta slash CBS slash Columbia Records who's known for killing off their artists. Who plan to sign with Atlantic Records or anyone else for that matter? Or just figured they're worth more dead than alive. Now, aside for the rumor of Otis having changed in his mind at the last minute of joining CBS Records, there was also a racial issue as well, whereas it was like gasoline thrown into the fire that was already started. So, they had the whole band killed. Well, almost all of them. The feud still went on for many years. Now, here are some of the artists who also died from mysterious plane crashes who was also signed with RCA, Columbia, CBS, EMI, etc. records. Jenny Rivera, John Denver, Stevie Ray Vaughan, if I mispronounce his name, I'm sorry, Ricky Nelson, Randy Rhodes, Jim Croce, if I mispronounce his name, sorry, <laughs> Melanie Thornton, and so on. Oh, and... Believe it or not, their plane crashed with similar issues. Although after, shortly after uh, Aaliyah's death, they came up with a whole new method, 
with untraceable drugs. Hence, Whitney Houston, Prince, Michael Jackson, and etc. And soon, unfortunately, Mariah Carey. Okay, I already told you that Aaliyah was first signed to Jive Records upon coming out, but later signed with this competitor, Atlantic Records, after marriage drama with R. Kelly. And that pissed them off, by the way, because she was becoming too big thereafter, and they wanted her so bad, like vampires who crave blood. Speaking of vampires, the hint of her death was in her last movie, Queen of the Dam, that was distributed by no other than Warner Brothers, who in 1995 partnered up with CBS Paramount Television, who since 2006 is called CW Television Network. You see the comparisons now? Now, you see, Damon Dash was told by Jav slash RCA Records to get Aaliyah so they can once again strike a deal, but that was only a setup to have her killed because she was being greedy or just naive. She thought she can be joining with both labels. Hey, more money, right? They tried to get her to join with movie deals such as Romeo Must Die and later Queen of the Damned, but she refused. Aaliyah's parents and agent didn't want her near our killing anymore. Who was the top selling artist over there at that time? So, they had the plane rigged, and then later, with the help of Jay-Z, ruined our Kelly ass too. Because no one says no to Columbia. Heck, where do you think Jay-Z learned this method from? You remember me saying this year was supposed to be Aaliyah and Janet Jackson reincarnated slash replacement? Well, she was already sought out by Jay-Z Fay back in 2002, shortly after Aaliyah's death. So, they molded her to take Aaliyah's place, and it was going good for a minute till the fame quickly faded away and Beyonce stole the spotlight the following year, and more years after, that where, whereas people was comparing it to, so they gave up on that dream because Beyonce started stealing a lot of Sierra's style because she wanted to be the Queen Bee. She learned this from Jay-Z. So now, Sierra is reduced to modeling gigs and marrying and getting pregnant by ballers, well, for now. 